Now, as I said earlier, we will be going all over uh, the globe trying to speak to different correspondents about reactions and different relationships that the United States has uh, with different countries in the world. But for more on U.S. election results, we're joined over the line by SABC News foreign editor, Sophie Mukweda. A very good morning to you, Sophie. Uh, uh, let's uh, quite an end to a very hectic period for the foreign desk, uh, uh, I imagine. Let's first look at the role of African Americans in these elections? Well, clearly, as uh, Joe Biden indicated during that speech, uh, early hours of the morning, uh, South African time, uh, of course, prime time in the United States of America, while it was uh, also daytime in Asia, he spoke about the role played by the African Americans in terms of. Uh, delivering this victory. We know that uh, in recent times, uh, African Americans and people, um, the minorities in the United States of America, felt, you know, isolated and sidelined. And all the time they had to endure uh, harsh weights from the United States of America number one citizen, that is the commander-in-chief, uh, Donald Trump, on um, issues of migration, but also on the issues of race. And therefore, they were really, really feeling uh, the heat. And you would recall that uh, uh, African Americans left the shores of the continent years and years ago. They have uh, built what America is today, heart and sweat hard work, you know, and therefore for them to always be characterized as outsiders and not really belonging to that country helps them so much. You can only see those who are visible. For example, when you look at the uh, channels last night, different channels, your journalists, the African-American journalists or the minorities and also uh, 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 women, other people who couldn't hold their tears when, when this, because this pain has been there. And unfortunately, as journalists and anchors, they have to wear these braces as if they don't feel it. But at the end of the day, they are human beings. And therefore, let's take a lesson at what uh, Joe Biden had to say to African Americans. The African American community stood up again for me. You've always had my back, and I'll have yours. I said at the outset, I wanted to represent this campaign to represent and look like America. We've done that. Now that's what I want the administration to look like and act like. For all those of you who voted for President Trump, I understand the disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple times myself, but now, Let's give each other a chance. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies, they are Americans. They are Americans. The Bible tells us to everything there is a season, a time to build, a time to reap, and a time to sow, and a time to heal. This is the time to heal in America. Well, Joe Biden, they're talking about the time to heal America. We know that uh, it is not only the African-Americans who are hurt, but many people, you know, from different walks of life based on their norms and values and people who are being discriminated against. You talk about uh, people with disabilities, uh, people with different beliefs, norms and values. They were all still in sideline. And I think... Uh, uh, his speech today, uh, early hours of this morning, South African time or Central time, was about reaching out. Him saying that uh, he contested elections as a proud Democrat, but he is going to be the president of Americans. In other words, he is going to embrace all. He is not going to only deliver for his family, like we saw with uh, uh, Donald Trump, the whole family running the administration, the son-in-law on foreign affairs, the son, 
the daughter on economic matters, and therefore he is going to be a different person. Let's just speak specifically, Sophie, what about the role of women with Kamala Harris now being vice president-elect? Women are still fighting patriarchy all over the world. Whatever small achievements are made around the world, it is achievement for women around the world. That is why the director of United Nations uh, uh, Women, Dr. Pumzile Mnambunuka, who is also a former deputy president of the Republic of South Africa, issued a statement immediately when it was declared that these uh, two will be uh, leading the United States of America in January. Because she's got first-hand experience when she came in as the deputy president of the Republic of South Africa, there was hope that the country is going somewhere. Today, we have regressed. We can't even see our way, whether at some point in time, we will have a woman in that powerful office. And therefore, it was a message to countries that if you don't include women in decision-making, your country will be left behind. Because in terms of population size, all over the world, women are in the majority. Women are hard workers. They are capable. They are able, like anybody else, they can do whatever is being done currently by men. You look at the COVID-19 right now. Countries that have done very well in terms of managing this pandemic Quietly so. Those countries are led by women. You look at New Zealand, to name the few, and Germany, led by a woman who's a scientist. They are doing well. These are not the only two countries. There are, I think, five or six countries led by women at the moment around the world. And all of them, without exception, are doing very well on COVID-19. Let's look at countries that are led by men. All of them top five and therefore it speaks to women can lead and i think having in that office it is a motivation to women in particular to say don't be scared to stand up and raise your hand and be counted not only in politics Desiree, in all walks of life in all sectors of life media science health education, small business, everywhere women must stand up, raise your hand and be counted like our former Miss SA, the current Miss uh, Universe, Zosie, always say, take your space. And that's exactly the message, particularly to young women, girls, all over the world. In some countries, they, they, they get married too early, they don't go to school, and all of that. This is a moment to say, if Kamala Harris was able to shatter all these ceilings in the justice system in America, and now in politics, I too can do it. Let's take a listen at what she had to say. The woman most responsible for my presence here today, my mother, Shamala Gopalan Harris, who is always in our hearts. Uh, when she came here from India at the age of 19, she maybe um, didn't quite imagine this moment, but she believed so deeply in an America where a moment like this is possible. And so I am thinking about her and about the generations of women, black women, Asian, white, Latina, Native American women, who throughout our nation's history have paved the way for this moment tonight. Women who fought and sacrificed so much for equality and liberty and justice for all. 
including the black women who are often, too often, overlooked, but so often prove they are the backbone of our democracy. All the women who have worked to secure and protect the right to vote for over a century, 100 years ago with the 19th Amendment, 55 years ago with the Voting Rights Act, and now in 2020 with a new generation of women in our country who cast their ballots and continued the fight for their fundamental right to vote and be heard. Tonight I reflect on their struggle, their determination, and the strength of their vision to see what can be unburdened by what has been. And I stand on their shoulders. And what a testament it is to Joe's character that he had the audacity to break one of the most substantial barriers that exists in our country and select a woman as his vice president. But while I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Well, Desiree, there you have it, where she's talking about the role of women. But when you look at the South African history as well, women led the way. In 1913, women took to the streets in Bluefontein marching and protesting against the land act. Not the men, the women. 1956, they went to Pretoria to union building. Women again. But it took so long for them to be able to play a prominent role in politics, even to be accepted as members of the African National Congress, because when it was started, they were excluded. Until such time, people like Charlotte Makweke continuously uh, insisted on, 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 on them being accepted as full members of the, uh, the, the, the ANC then, and finally being able to be cut carrying members of the uh, organization or a political party. Therefore, the struggle of women are similar. But it's said that today in South Africa, we seem to be regressing. On the continent, we have regressed. We only have one female president in Ethiopia. It's ceremonial because she's head of state. She is not head of government. The head of government, the person who is on the driving seat, is the prime minister. And therefore, this is time for women around the world to reflect. Sophie, I know my daughter, who was watching the rolling coverage for the whole week, uh, uh, said about Kamala Harris that this is the kind of woman you look at, a kind of leader you look at and you want to be. Just to conclude our conversation, uh, Sophie, the question on everybody's mind in terms of the way forward, what will be the U.S. Uh, priorities on the international stage? Well, let's start on the national question. The priority will be COVID-19. Rebuilding of the economy, uniting the people of America, reaching out to those who are wounded because you can't ignore the 70 million who voted for Donald Trump. But it's possible if a leader is serious about reconciliation and putting people first. At international level, on the international stage, the first priority or one thing is to bring back the image and the role and the participation of the United States of America in the multilateral fora, in multilateral organizations. Because what Donald Trump did, he adopted a America first. There's nothing wrong in prioritizing your own citizens, but that has got limitations because we live in a global village particularly on issues of trade. The ha I think the other issue, you know that Donald Trump had announced that he's going to pull out a World Health Organization. I am confident that he is going to reverse that because at the moment with this pandemic, no country is safe until 
all countries are safe. And therefore, United, United States of America cannot be a lone voice and think it can handle this pandemic. Secondly, the World Trade Organization, Donald Trump, a week ago with his administration, blocked what could have been a historic moment around the world where European Union, Africa, and many others had supported a woman candidate to be the new director of the World Trade Organization. It was going to be history. And an African woman from Nigeria, but who also has a citizenship uh, in America. But she blocked that because to ascend to that, you must, it must be by consensus. I'm sure that is going to change. The other issue is to go back to the relations with Cuba. You remember the handshake? between Raul Castro and Barack Obama during Madiba's memorial, that I'm, was a I, sign that I'm things were have about to, to change. I'm going to have to ask you to hold on to your thoughts there and hope to continue the conversation later on. But we have Patrick Falk holding on for us. But thank you so much for your thoughts this morning. All right, let us now bring in Patrick Falk, who is uh, standing by for us in Beijing China, Patrick, a very good morning to you from here in South Africa. What's it like? What's the response like in China to the ascension of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the leadership of the United States? Well, it's a funny thing because if you've, you've actually walked past any newsstands here in Beijing over the past week, you'll have noticed that really there hasn't been an awful lot of coverage of what's been going on in the U.S. But that has changed somewhat today since the result has officially been announced. And we are getting uh, lots of positive reaction. Uh, certainly, Chinese media is portraying this as a big win for China, uh, as you can probably uh, imagine. Uh, a lot of people really welcome the possibility of more stable relations with uh, Biden coming in charge at the White House. Uh, notably, the Global Times today talked about the possibility of the U.S. Co cooperating with uh, China on things like the, the development of a vaccine to combat the coronavirus and also uh, on things like climate change. So, I mean, a lot of people have also said, and there is this huge sense that a Trump presidency would have been uh, more advantageous to China. A lot of people think think that because of what people here see as a decline in America's leadership on the global stage and that has arguably allowed China to exert greater influence but uh, a lot of people also feel you know that certainly in the near term a Biden presidency would give a bit more breathing room for uh, Sino-US relations. It's interesting you should say that because uh, uh, just in terms of you know the recent history we know that uh, Trump's relationship with China hasn't been a very a great one. Well, you say that, but I mean, a lot of people are going to be talking about what sort of relationship Joe Biden will have with Chinese leader Xi Jinping as well. A lot of people feel that Xi Jinping was a man that President Trump admired. Remember, he congratulated when, him when he scrapped term limits for uh, the Chinese presidency. Also congratulated him for things like the handling of the crisis in Hong Kong. So there is a big question mark about uh, how uh, Joe Biden is going to maintain that relationship. Is there going to be uh, any a big change? You can't imagine that he's the person that would uh, show open admiration for him the way that Donald Trump has. Uh, but that's a real big question that's still out there. You know, a lot of people have also noted that Donald Trump has been quite hard on China in many ways. And some people would arguably say that he has uh, exposed some of China's weaknesses and made it apparent to the world some of the possible threats that are coming from this country as well. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that update. And of course, it's a developing story as we uh, watch events unfold. Patrick Falk coming to us today from China.